Welcome back to the Nest Tour, Cardinals. My name is Brenda Lino. On today's Nest, we will have more information on solar panels around the school, summer jobs, have our word of the week, a Cardinal kitchen, and last but not least, a Hungry Bird. Kayla informs us more about the benefits of having solar panels and creating a healthy environment here at Hoover High School. According to the stats, um, we generate 29,000 to 39,000 kilowatt hours of clean re renewable energy just from this install from 2010. Um, and it saves us about $8,000 a year. Where does Hoover High School generate most of our solar power energy from? So I believe in about 2010, um, there was a project that went to a, a company uh, to retrofit Hoover High School for solar and most of the solar panels were placed in the 400 building, which is our library building. Um, I believe that's where most of our solar uh, energy comes in from. I do know that the 200 building after it was built, uh, solar panels were built into it um, and our Savid um, woodshop building was also added with solar energy. Will there be any more solar panels being installed? We do have a small project going on. I believe they're building um, benches with shades that are going to be going around campus um, and they will have solar panels as the roofs um, and it will help um, create energy to charge uh, devices that students use, their cell phones, tablets, etc. What is the impact the solar panel has towards the school? Um, solar panels reduce our overall cost in terms of generating electricity. Do you believe without the solar panels, our everyday life here at Hoover would be affected? I don't know if everyday life would be affected, but the money that we are able to spend on other things like our students would definitely be affected. Do you know the percentage that our school gets due to the solar panels? Not 100% sure, but I will estimate because this is very pretty much for the the light system I would say between 12 or 15 percent more or less do you know where the solar panel power goes to um, that goes to our school May, as far as I know many schools in our districts are uh, installing solar panels it, not only in the new schools but in, in all the old schools also to conserve energy and uh, save money and protect the environment too. You know, that's, I believe it's a, that's a great idea. Hoover's helping the environment by having solar panels in our school. Conserve energy, Cardinals. Now we have Andrew giving us some information regarding summer jobs and how to get one. As the school year comes to an end, many Hoover students are looking for jobs, but they do not know where to start. Um, they, have to, they have to be 16 years old and they have to go to Mr. Perez in the main office and ask for a work permit. They need to have already been hired in order to get a work permit. You don't pick one up before you're hired. Well, a student should have their resume prepared and look online for questions that they would ask you in the interview. So things like, tell me about yourself, so you have a 30-second commercial of who you are. I'm a student at Hoover High. I have taken these type of courses. I'm interested in this position because. So, um, and have a little bit of knowledge about what you're applying for. So if you, the San Diego Zoo, know that it's one of the world famous zoos. Um, and at school, we do offer some um, job fairs for students to get employment. Minors must meet mandatory school attendance laws and academic requirements in order to obtain work permits. Schools have the legal right to restrict or reduce the type of employment of the or the hours of work if the health of the minor is being impaired. Usually when I'm thinking about how I'm going to make my resume, I put all of the school activities that I've been involved in, um, including leadership opportunities. And if you don't have any prior work experience, that's usually all you have to put on your resume. Since I worked really close to my home, I was able to usually walk to work, but I know that a lot of other people usually um, take the bus, or if they work really far, they'll get a ride from their parents. If you're taking a lot of AP classes or honors classes, you really have to sort out how many hours you work, but if you um, happen to have like more time on your hands, then I do recommend working because um, it'll give you real world experience. You can also search Indeed.com using the company name and your location to generate a list of open positions. Many companies list right in the job posting the minimum age job applicants must be. You will be able to apply directly online to companies with open positions. Um, definitely the money. It helped me with school financing. And another thing was that it gave me a lot of experience working and talking to people because I worked in the hospitality business. So every day it was like different customers and different people that I have to talk to and interact with. 
I definitely learned how to interact with different people from different backgrounds. Um, the shop that I worked at was in the middle of um, Hillcrest, and I got to meet some pretty interesting people. And I guess that gave me like um, new insights and new perspectives of where people come from and how to deal with different situations. In the selection process, definitely find something that you could see yourself doing like for a little while. And um, when you actually get into like an application or interview, be as truthful as um, possible because they do like hire people based off of their um, belief that you could do well. So don't lie or anything, but definitely tell them your strong points and weak points to see if you're suitable for the job. When you get called for an interview, make sure you're prepared. Remember, presentation is everything. The word of the week this week is formulate. Formulate is to devise or develop as a method or even a system. In other words, formulate is to create. I got it. I have a plan to save it. Julio quickly formulated a plan to save his friend. I have a plan to save him. I'm going to take him to the nurse. Trust. This was a quick definition of this week's Word of the Week. Cardinals, today I want to talk about Cardinal Pride and the student-led movement that's going to take us to the next level. If we're passionate about everything that we do, if we continue to show resiliency with all the things that we work through, if we have integrity and we do the right thing, if we continue to embrace the diversity that is so special at Hoover High School, and if we continue to empower others to be their best self, this school is gonna be the school that I know all of us know that we can be. There's a lot of things in life that we can't control, but I'll tell you one thing that we can control all the time, and that is doing the right thing. Let's continue to do the right thing, let's push each other to do the right thing, and let's be the Hoover High School that we all know we're capable of being. You guys have a great day. Cardinal Pride, who ride? Silliness, news, entertainment, student television. Summer is approaching. That means the hot weather will come. A way to cool yourself and enjoy the weather is to have something nice and cold. Jalen shows us how to make delicious mangoniadas. For this week's Cardinal Kitchen, you will learn how to make mangoniadas as the hot weather is approaching more. You will need four mangoes, four to six spoons of sugar, three lemons, ice, chamoy, gummy worms, tamarindo straw, and chaka chaka. We'll be doing the mango ice cream by first putting the mango slices and the ice into a blender to mix it. If you like, you can put chamoy around the rim of the cup to give it a nice look. Take out the now mango ice cream and bring in your ingredients together. Have a jar cup ready and with an ice cream scoop, get three to five scoops of ice cream to put it in the cup. Add chamoy on top of the ice cream along with the gummy worms. After that, put in some chaka chaka. That will be the first layer of the mangoniada. Repeat the process again until you fill up the cup. You can use a regular straw to put it in the cup if you don't have a tamarindo straw. And if you want, you can add more candy to the mangoniada. Have you ever tried mariposa ice cream? If not, Lileni fills us in. Hello Hoover Cardinals, welcome back to today's Hungry Bird. On today's episode, we'll be visiting Mariposa Ice Cream. Mariposa Ice Cream is located on Adams Avenue and Holly Boulevard. The ice cream shop started off 30 years ago in Mariposa, California, seven hours away up in Central California. As the owner moved to San Diego, they started a little shop in the summer 2000s. Started off by making homemade ice cream such as cookies and cream, chocolate, Rocky and Road, and other flavors throughout the week. And in the weekend had events, festivals, and fairs being affordable. Over the 19 years, 99% of the items in the shop are gifted items from customers. Beetle fans to items with the meaning of butterflies. 
politicians and celebrities had visited the ice cream shop. They served ice cream to the Chargers and shipped ice cream to San Francisco and the 49ers. Mariposa is very supportive of Chicano Park festivals and has been part of it, as their logos came from a famous Chicano Park artist. As our environment has been affected with plastic, Mariposa has tried taking step by step in stopping the use of plastic by using wooden spoons, paper straws, and hoping in the future months being plastic free. Mariposa is a wonderful place as it provides a social environment and one of the best waffle cones in San Diego. Today we're back with another QQ. Today we'll be asking the question, who is your favorite song artist? Who's your favorite song artist? Right now, I'm feeling Post Malone. Wow. It's good stuff. Who ride? Um, I'm kind of into like reggae right now. So there's this artist called Proto G. Proto J. Proto J. Yeah. <laughs> Cardinal Pride. Who ride? Uh, Seti Schmack. Seti Schmack. Young Thug. <laughs> J. Cole. Lil Uzi. Who's your favorite song artist? The Juice and Arrow. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Skip it. Skip it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Rich the Kid. Oh my god. Hey, I'm saying, I'm saying Melly. Hey, free, free Melly, man. I'm saying Melly. Travis Scott, definitely. Frank Ocean. Osuna. <laughs> Who's your favorite song artist? Uh, mine's gonna have to be Chris Brown. Definitely Kehlani. The Weeknd. Um, Romeo Santos or Bad Bunny? I have to say Bandai Mesa, you know, some songs all day, every day. <laughs> uh, my favorite song artist is Ron the Don, you already know. Travis Scott. Kendrick Lamar. Sean Mendez. Who's your favorite song artist? Song artist? Yeah. Uh, myself. Come to my show. <laughs> That is it for this week's Nest. Thanks for watching, and remember Cardinals, Wednesdays are awesome.